Thank you. Speaker number four, Sean Tucker. My last two weeks of November. My last two weeks of November, Sean Tucker. Y'all know that song by Tim McGraw, Live Like You Were Dying? It starts out like this. I went skydiving, I went Rocky Mountain climbing, I went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. It's about a guy who gets diagnosed with cancer and spends the next several months working through his bucket list, trying to squeeze in as much life as he can into the end. But what it's really about is a guy who gets hyper-focused on his life and his life choices and how he got to be where he's at right now. To be honest, this is not exactly what happened to me. But at the end of November, my doctor and I kind of thought something like this was happening to me. There was a good chance we both thought that I had a brain aneurysm. They run in my family. My grandmother died of one when she was young. My sister died of one when she's younger than I am right now. My dad survived his. Spoiler alert, I am as fine as a fat man can be, but at the end of November, <laughs> I was honestly scared to death for my life. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, judges, please let me share with you my last two weeks of November. It really started a few months before that, when I started hearing a thumping in my ear. A little bit at first, and it got more and more, and it got louder and louder. It sounded like somebody tapping on a microphone to see if it's on. And it grew, and it continued, and it happened more often, until at some point my wife suggested I call my doctor, which is sound advice. And it, especially if you talk to my wife, you need to make sure she knows that I said that was sound advice. <laughs> the problem was I had not done anything my doctor told me to do the last time I saw her. And I really saw no reason to upset her unnecessarily. <laughs> Honestly, I was seriously attributing the noise in my ear to poor maintenance of the vehicle I had been given. I, I really had abused it. It was high mileage. And all cars over a certain mile squeak and rattle and moan and groan. I just thought that's what it was. Until one afternoon at Spats. If you get a middle-aged group of men together, at some point the conversation will steer itself towards poor health and other ailments. <laughs> it, was, it was at this point that I naively mentioned the drummer in my ear. I was immediately, I was mercilessly bombarded with terrifying stories <laughs> and helpful advice. Mind you, by gentlemen that are experienced in the art of cardiovascular abuse. <laughs> it went something like this. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a sure sign of a clogged carotid artery. You better call your doctor right away. Oh yeah, I knew a guy that had that same thing. He died a couple months later, I think. You better call your doctor. You ever see that movie, Scanners, where people's heads are blowing up? <laughs> that's, that's a good movie. So by the time I got home on Friday night, I had honestly worked myself into a fit. I was freaking out. <laughs> you see, I, I suffer from a second genetic flaw. I, I, I'm burdened with an excess of imagination. I Googled just enough to be absolutely convinced that I was dying of rickets, yellow fever, and brain aneurysm. Three or four by now, they were breeding. I could see one thumping in the side of my head in the rear view mirror. I barely could sleep that night. I saw my doctor, I relented, I called her, and by the way, I love my doctor. She is a no BS straight shooter. We bonded the first time we met. I went in for a physical, she handed me a little plastic cup and a big Sharpie. I took my time and artfully wrote, Sean Tucker, he here, on the side. She gets me, we have a good uh, rapport. But with my family history, my current blood pressure, the obvious disregard for my health, and the drummer in my ear, she was, concerned and, and scheduled several tests, the most important of which was an MRI, but it was no normal MRI. It was a 3D, 4K, high resolution, deep scan of my brain, which brings me to my second, my third genetic flaw, which is claustrophobia. <laughs> I am terribly claustrophobic. Now I can, I can manage my claustrophobia like I can ride in an elevator. I choose not to because that is an awful and stupid way to die, but I can <laughs> ride an elevator. I cannot, however, climb into a, a torpedo tube like you're going to launch me at a U-boat. <laughs> the last time I got an MRI, honestly, it took three trips to the imaging facility. 
It took two volume for me and one for my wife to get me into the tube for 25 minutes. This MRI was going to be an hour and a half in the magnetic tube of death. I searched for an open MRI. And apparently the medical field is not bound by truth and advertising laws because open MRI means slightly larger torpedo tube. <laughs> Eventually, after a lot of searching, I found a facility in Winter Park that had a giant magnetic donut that they would get in. It cost me enough where I should be paid off in about 72 months. But they were able to slip me in the tube with the help of more volume where I, it took, they got a deep scan of my brain and they saw everything they wanted to see. Why am I sharing this story with you? Because at the end of November, I was blessed with the telltale heart. I was blessed with being hyper-focused on my life choices, being hyper-focused on how I treated my body and how I got to this point and what I was gonna do if something was gonna happen. I'm, I'm here to tell you, please take my experience, learn from it, take a page out of Tim McGraw's songbook and live like you were dying. My sister, when she died of a brain aneurysm, she dropped was dead before she hit the ground. No time to say goodbye. No time to make changes. No time for corrections. Please, take this moment and review your life. Thank you. <laughs>